Cats are so human-like, and I think they're a reflection of our true selves. They're intelligent, housebroken, and just want to be loved. I used to be a dog person myself before I owned cats, but then I learned that they could be trained. And that's exactly what we'll be doing today. It's training day. I'll be stealing my training technique from this guy. B.F. Skinner. He was a psychologist in the mid-1900s who studied behavior. He was different from a lot of psychologists in his day because he didn't care about people's internal thoughts. Instead, he thought that behavior, and specifically the consequences of behavior, shaped us. So he wanted to know how animals, and therefore humans, learn to do things. Perhaps his most famous invention that he used to study this was the Skinner box. In its simplest form, it's a box that has a lever and a food dispenser. Skinner put a rat in the box and waited. The rat explored the environment and eventually hit the lever and a food pellet came out. When the rat hit the lever again, it again dispensed a pellet. After several repetitions of this, the rat learned that touching the lever equals food. But the box can get more complex, for example, two levers, one red and one blue, and an electric grid on the floor. The blue lever gives a food pellet, and the red lever gives a mild electric shock. Again, the rat or whatever animal was doing the experiment quickly learned to distinguish between the red and blue levers. This experiment was repeatable with a wide variety of animals, but you did have to be careful because sometimes the animal would get too good at it and would just gorge themselves by pressing the lever over and over again. This kind of training is called operant conditioning. B.F. Skinner said that behavior is shaped by either reinforcement or punishment, and each of those categories have a positive or negative side. But it's not positive and negative like good and bad, but instead positive meaning adding something and negative meaning subtracting something. If you put that into a chart, it would look something like this. Now, this might seem technical so far, but your parents use these techniques on you to shape your behavior, probably without even knowing it themselves. Let me break it down. Positive reinforcement means adding something good for a behavior. By giving something good, it reinforces that behavior and makes it more likely to happen again. For example, let's say uh, you finish your homework before 8 p.m. and your parents let you play video games for half an hour before bedtime. Negative reinforcement means taking away something bad for a behavior. Removing something bad also reinforces the behavior and makes it more likely to happen again. This is commonly confused with punishment, but it's totally different, so don't confuse it. Let me give you an example. Uh, if you finish all the lima beans on your plate and your parents say, you know what, since you finished all your veggies, you don't have to do the dishes tonight. Now we're on to punishment. Now, positive punishment means adding something bad for a behavior. By adding something bad, it diminishes the behavior and makes it less likely to happen again. For example, if you are uh, playing with your little brother after lights are out and your parents make you scrub the stairs leading to the scary basement. And negative punishment means taking away something good for a behavior. By removing something good, it also diminishes the behavior and makes it less likely to happen again. For example, if you keep fighting with your little brother over who gets to play the N64, and your parents take it away for a week. So, now you're an expert in operant conditioning. What's crazy is that this kind of learning can get super complex. It's the basis for practically all animal and human training. You could teach rats to play basketball for crying out loud. But today, we're gonna use this on Loki and Bill. Since cats are the pets of the internet, I thought it was only appropriate that you all got to choose which tricks I teach them. And, uh, since I have two cats, I figured I might as well teach them two tricks. So for Loki, I'll be teaching him how to jump into my arms, and this will be hard. It's by far the most complex trick on the list. And Bill here is going to learn how to give me a high five. For both these tricks, I will be shaping their behavior. I can't expect Bill to give me a high five right away, and Loki is definitely not going to jump into my arms willingly. So instead, I'm going to take baby steps and slowly get them closer and closer to the final behavior that I want. For Loki, that means starting down low and slowly getting him to jump higher and higher. And for Bill, it means getting him to reach for my hand and then training that into a high five. 
So without further ado, let's train. Come here. Come here, up here. Very good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 Good. Up. 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 Ooh. <laughs> Jeez, look. I can tell that there's a cat treat there. Oh, you smell it? Yeah, like, he's not getting it. Yeah. 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 Do it again? Yeah. You're on a roll, Bill. Yeah. 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 Now I don't have any treats in my hand, but I'm gonna get him to, uh, high five. High five. High five. High five. Yeah. Yeah. High five. Good. Yeah. New day, new Loki. Let's see if we can get him to hop up here. quite straight on the flat part of my palm and that's really where I'd want him to be. He's still sort of reaching around my hand um, to pull it in. Yeah, good. Up, good. Up, good. Up. Loki has uh, lost interest in the treats, which is too bad because that makes training this much harder. <laughs> still using the chair as a support. I really want to avoid that. Let's see what we can do to avoid that. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Up. Yeah. What I'm hoping to do now is slowly increase my height. Uh, this probably won't work, but uh, it's time to test the waters and see if we can push this just a, a level or two higher. Okay. Up. All right, 
let's try and use the power of the treat bag. Come here. No, you're not gonna get it that way. Ingenious. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to admit that the whole reason that I wanted to teach Bill here how to give me a high five was for this exact situation. Every morning when I leave for work, Bill will sit here and uh, say goodbye, essentially. What I would love as a goodbye is just to have him give me a high five. Yeah! Right before I leave for the day. So let's do our training. Yeah. 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 All right, Bill, I'm going to work. High five. Yeah. Good kid. See you later. It's come to this, the last day. Loki has been working tirelessly to learn a trick, but has he mastered it? Absolutely not. But if I can get him to jump into my arms at least one time, even using treats, I will count that as a success. Let's get into it. Folks, I'm gonna call that one a solid failure. But if we had kept working, if we had more time, if we'd done more incremental steps, we could get Loki there. He's just not ready yet. If anything, Loki revealed one of the weaknesses of operant conditioning, and that is that the animal always has a choice. Unlike classical conditioning, which relies on autonomic responses, operant conditioning builds off of experiences of positive and negative reinforcement and punishment. But in the end, it's still their choice. He just chose not to do it. Bill, on the other hand, is the tried and true expert. He has learned his trick so well over the past few days, and I have seen him do the trick without even needing any treat. The positive reinforcement that we've been using lately is just uh, petting him, and he really gets a kick out of that. So let's try this out as if it's the real situation. So you stay right there, okay? Walk on. So here we go. All right, Bill, I'll see you later. High five. Yeah. Bill has learned his trick, no problem, and is a true example of operant conditioning in action. Good work, Bill. Well, there you have it. Both a success and a failure using operant conditioning. What did you think of the experiment? Did you like it? Are there things that you think I could have done better to make it go smoother? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of Micah Psych. If you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you'd like to catch videos like this in the future. Hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time that we do release a new video. And until next time, I'm Micah. Think about it.